Hello students, this is second part of the chapter Lost Spring which is penned by Anish Young and uh, let us recapitulate quickly before proceeding ahead. In our last video we saw that Anish Young is very sensitive towards child labor and uh, she is talking about grinding poverty which is prevailing in India. She also describes the uh, factual events that she witnessed around her. Considering the first part of the story, we can say that the childhood of human being is the spring period of one's life and that is very true. It is full of fun, frolic, play and pleasure. It is known for its innocence but there are children like sahib alam who is a rag picker and uh, he migrated from Bangladesh to Delhi in search of some opportunity but here also he could survive because of rag picking only apart from that his life was not changed at all every day he had to work and because of parents poverty stricken condition they are not able to provide education which is the main problem with the little children let's move ahead in this story acquaintance with the barefoot rag pickers leads me to Simapuri, a place on the periphery of Delhi yet miles away from it metaphorically. Those who live here are squatters who came from Bangladesh back in 1971. Sahib's family is among them. Simapuri was then a wilderness. Anish Jung and Sahib Alam became friends very soon. And uh, Anish Jung was taken to Sahebe Alam's place. Then she realized, just like uh, a coin has two sides, every city has two faces. The bright, the well-lit and the illuminated world of the rich and the dark, dingy, depressing world of poor. The poor exist on the periphery, constantly looking for a bright world, isn't it? And the rich are dependent on them to maintain the glamour of the world. That is also another universal truth. Rich people cannot earn money on their own. They require labourers. They require workers. Okay, without workers, they won't be able to get the product. They won't be able to get the profit. The writer for this is, despite being ugly underside of the big cities, Slum and their dwellers, like Sahebe Alam, have become an intrinsic part of the world of the rich, as uh, they are interlinked and interdependent. The rich have the money, but they don't desire to work, and the poor have no money, therefore they are compelled to sl uh, slog to sustain, right? Students, uh, through the eyes of Anish Jung, when we look into the life of Sahib Alam, we get to see that uh, they live in a very unhygienic condition where there is no proper sanitation, there is no water, pure water, there is no electricity connection and they are in abject poverty. When we see the situation minutely, we see the refugee population of Simapuri um, represents a large vote bank for almost all the political parties and at some stage these illegal occupants, remember illegal occupants of government land around cit cities are provided ration cards to benefit political sharks in the election process. Remember these uh, ration cards are not given for identity but for getting votes from them and uh, it is understood that those who will provide them with the ration card uh, which will uh, give them uh, ration in the ration shops okay they are going to vote for them they don't have to they don't have to bother about who is doing for the development because that is not their headache their headache is to survive their headache is to earn food Okay, so therefore, their basic necessities are also limited. Let's move ahead, students. If at the end of the day, we can feed our families and go to bed without 
and aching stomach, we would rather live here than in the fields that gave us no grain, say a group of women in tattered saris when I ask them why they left their beautiful land of green fields and rivers. Whenever they find food, wherever they find food, they pitch their tents that become transit homes. Children grow up in them becoming partners in survival and survival in Simapuri means rag picking. Here we see ultimately it is food that a person requires. Sahib Alam along with his family if they would have got uh, food in Bangladesh they would not have left their homeland but they moved they migrated to India uh, thinking that they will get some opportunity to earn their living and they of course they earn but it was not a respectable job at all but they had to do it because it was not their country i must further say that the children of slums like simapuri are offsprings or uh, new born or children of homeless rag pickers due to extreme poverty their parents are not able to provide for them and uh, because of this grinding poverty, even they are contributing, even they are supporting their family members in earning some money. Therefore, um, right from their initial stage, right from their spring season, right from their childhood, they start earning. And this is how they become partners in survival for their parents. Let's move ahead now. Through the years, it has acquired the proportions of a fine art. Garbage to them is gold. It is their daily bread, a roof over their heads, even if it is a leaking roof. But for a child, it is even more. I sometimes find a rupee, even a ten rupee note. Sahib says, his eyes lighting up. When you can find a silver coin in a heap of garbage, you won't, you don't stop scrounging, for there is hope of finding more. It seems that for children, garbage has a meaning different from that, uh, different from what it means to their parents. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. For the elders, it is a means of survival. Here. Writer Anish Jung wants to uh, tell us that every day they used to pick up the rags and therefore they have perfected the art of scrounging. They have become very perfect in this. They are artists now. And here this is a hyperbole, hyperbole again because rag picking is compared with fine art. It is being exaggerated. Okay, that mere task of rag picking cannot be compared with art. Okay, but a writer is doing it. Therefore, it is hyperbole. This is done to show that how expert small children have become in rag picking. Another very important line is garbage to them is gold. Students, if you remember... At the inception of this chapter, I told you all that gar uh, garbage for them is gold. It is gold because they can find gold also. They can find any other thing which is valuable for them. Therefore, it is exaggeration. Therefore, it is hyperbole again. So, this line you must remember. Garbage to them is gold. And gold signifies anything which is important for them. Because of this art of scrounging in the garbage, they are able to get food even though it is not nutritious and tasty. And because of this mere art, they are able to have roof above their head even though it is leaking. It means that something is better than nothing. But the utility of scrounging in the garbage does not stop here. It is not only for getting bread and roof above their head. It is something more for children. And what is it? I'll tell you. It is something which encourages them to search more in the garbage. It is a kind of game 
when they get something valuable they 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 want to uh, search in the garbage more and more so that they can get more expensive things okay so it is not only way of survival but it is it is also a means of entertainment it is also a way to make them cheerful make them uh, playful and have fun and frolic and when sahib e alam says so his face lights up it shows that he is extremely happy picking rags and this is not his fault it is not his fault because another world of education another world of uh, enlightenment is not shown to him he has created a limitation to himself that some money he will find in the uh, garbage and he he will be able to provide food and roof to his family uh, family members okay that's it apart from that he does not have any expectation and he does not have any hope also therefore the writer says the definition of garbage to parent and to the children are different for parent it is a means of survival it is a way of earning money but for children apart from earning money it is entertainment it is a game it is a way of making themselves happy etc one winter morning i see saheb standing by the fenced gate of the neverwood club watching two young men dressed in white playing tennis i like the game he hums content to watch it standing behind the fence i go inside when no one is around he admits the gatekeeper lets me use the swing saheb too is wearing tennis shoes but that look strange over his discolored shirt and shorts someone gave them to me he says in a matter of an explanation when we minutely observe sahib e alam we find that he was extremely interested in studies he wanted to get education not only that he was interested in sports as well now here the discarded uh, tennis shoes with holes in their soles are a dream come true for sahib e alam and it is for two reasons number one is he did not have any shoes to wear and number 2 he was very fond of playing tennis though it was unlikely for him to get a chance to play the game at least the shoes came to fulfill his dream partially in his locality there is a generous gatekeeper who allows sahib e alam to go inside the gate and use swing even though he is not able to play tennis he can play swing and satisfy his desires the fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them does not bother him for one who has walked barefoot even shoes with a hole is a dream come true but the game he is watching so intently is out of his reach here it is revealed that some rich boy gave tennis shoes to saheb he gave them to saheb because uh, he did not want to wear them as uh, there was a hole in one of them the fact that uh, there was a hole in one of them did not bother saheb e alam because till now he had been walking barefoot therefore having a shoe was dream come true for saheb e alam and it is better to have something in his feet than walking barefoot let's read out the last paragraph now this morning saheb is on his way to the milk booth in his hand is a steel canister i now work in a tea stall down the road he says pointing in the distance i am paid 800 rupees and all my meals does he like the job i ask his his face i see has lost the carefree look the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry on lightly over his shoulder the bag was his the canister belongs to the ma- uh, to the man who owns the tea shop saheb is no longer his own master 
finally sahib e alam had taken a conflicting step and uh, it were he had done this in uh, order to provide a little bit more money to his family members in rag picking it was not sure that every day he will get uh, money or something valuable but here it is certain in tea stall it is certain that he will be provided with the money and meals but the problem was that he was not happy it is because although the job uh, at tea stall provided him with a fixed uh, monthly income it had taken away privilege of being his own master from being a free spirited carefree uh, bird answerable to no one he has become an overworked unhappy child with no trace of childhood left in him this was um this has taken privilege of being his own master now he is bound to the job he is burdened with the responsibilities while picking grag he was very much free okay he was his own master but now he was not and finally we see that he was unhappy but it was good for him because a certain amount will be uh, given to his parents students we cannot be happy with the decision that sahib e alam had taken it is because he has a long way to go he has to get educated he has to support his family members he cannot be a chotu in a, a tea stall for entire life he has to upgrade isn't it and this can be possible through education and yet he is not shown any kind of sympathy any kind of care by anyone from society and that initiative we have to take now in my next video after completing second story i'll talk about how we can eradicate child labor till then you please let me know whether the video was helpful to you all or not Thank you.